I can remember a time where some movies absolutely terrified me. This was way back before I was old enough to even discover horror movies, a genre that wasn't properly introduced to me until I was comfortably seated in my tweens. Animated kids movies would introduce a fearsome antagonist and I would run screaming from the CRT VCR combo. The Hydra and Hercules, the introduction of Hopper in A Bug's Life, these elicited a very visceral reaction in a young Keegs. My folks often recount tales of me yelling in the movie theater because I was in on something that the main characters were not. An early experience with dramatic tension for sure, but these experiences stuck with me. This kind of thing is par for the course in all sorts of non-horror movies, with filmmakers adding in a scary element to heighten the stakes and draw the audience in. However, some movies are so strong across the board that one might not even notice how terrifying some of the themes are until revisiting it long after the initial view. Watching some of these with a fresh perspective or or perhaps a deeper knowledge of other comparable texts can be very eye-opening. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be discussing the top 5 movies you didn't realize were terrifying. Before we begin, make sure to take a moment and give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see some more secretive scares. Roll the clip. For those who didn't know, that clip comes from the 1985 fantasy flick Return to Oz, which features some particularly terrifying moments that stand above some of the scariest stuff actual horror movies have to offer. Plus, it's marketed to kids. How are kids supposed to reckon with the nightmares of the wheelers? Okay, let's start with our top five. Coming in at number five, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. This movie is totally insane, right? But kids, they'll accept anything as normal as long as they see it early on enough. A joyous tale of a young lad winning a contest and getting a candy factory tour turns dark way faster than anyone could have imagined. The 1971 Mel Stewart hit features the irreplaceable Gene Wilder as the titular Willy Wonka in this adaptation of Roald Dahl's book. Wilder really encapsulates that manic energy of a serial killer turned candy maker as he leads the children to their doom with a smile on his face and a skipping his step. This movie is basically Saw, but for kids. Our candy CEO lives alone in his industrial wasteland with a hidden oasis deep inside. Wonka employs only live-in slave laborers in the form of Oompa Loompas and ensures that no one goes in or comes out without his express permission. The characters are immediately trapped in a shrinking room comparable to the trash compactor in Star Wars and they all believe they're going to die. Claustrophobia? Come on, Mr. Wonka's just trying to have some fun. Soon after, every child except for Charlie either has a near-death experience or just dies outright. Augustus Gloop almost drowns in a chocolate river and then is sucked into a pressurized tube and fired off to be made into chocolate bars. Do you think the shareholders were made aware? Next up is that horrifying psychedelic boat ride where the guests are terrorized with bugs, noise, and images of children being slaughtered. And in the meantime, Wonka's just losing it. He's screaming at the top of his lungs, ensuring his guests are properly scared for their lives before finally letting them off the hook. Everything's back to normal, right? In rapid succession, a girl is inflated to the point of bursting, Charlie and his grandpa are nearly chopped to bits, a girl and his father are thrown into an incinerator, and a young lad is shrunk down and then put on a taffy stretcher. The taffy stretcher is definitely just a medieval torture rack. All this happens with some lovely musical interludes and technicolored dreamland visuals, so hey! It's all good. No murder and terror here. In the end, Willy Wonka is a cautionary tale for children that teaches them to behave and not be greedy or else a man in a purple suit will invite you into his home and murder you based on the sins you've committed. Family fun, everyone. Coming in at number four, we have Matilda. Back to back, Roald Dahl. I mean, the man really didn't like children, even though he made his living writing for them. So he's got one hell of a knack for writing wickedness into fun fairy tales. This 1996 gem was directed by Danny DeVito, which is a fact that I especially enjoy. This is prior to Magnum Dong and trying time egg memes. Matilda is about a telekinetic child with a terrible home life who attends a school that's really not much better. Honestly, this flick could have turned into Carrie 2.0 in a heartbeat. Powerful child with awful parents? 
Nobody listens to her. Public shaming at her school. Had Matilda not made fast friends, we might have been treated to a bloodbath instead of a chocolate cake force feed. Which, by the way, is a really messed up scene. A child is threatened with a giant knife and force fed like a duck being prepared for foie gras. After powering through via sheer force of will, the cake eating champ has a plate broken over his head and then he's pulled into oblivion, never to be seen again. Trunchbull could very well be a horror movie villain if she got the chance. Bump the rating up to 14A and we could see her chop some hands off and cleave some necks. She even murdered a man and moved into his vacant house. Insane. Even with a happy ending, there are a lot of questionable happenings in this children's classic. Filling out our number three spot, Train Spotting. Addiction is scary, like full stop. At the core of this fast paced, darker than dark black comedy based on Irvine Welsh's novel of the same name is a story about the pain, struggle, and hopelessness that live within addiction. A landmark film directed by Danny Boyle, Train Spotting is visually exciting, funny, interesting, tragic, and hopeful. The soundtrack is one that defines a generation as well. At points, the flick can be so stylish and entertaining it almost convinces you of the merits of being a Scottish heroin addict. Choose life, am I right? We feel for the deeply flawed characters and often cringe and scratch our heads at some of the decisions they make, but ultimately we want the best for this ragtag group of gutter-bound pals. The one character who seems to be best set up for success is ruined by the ill-conceived actions of his friends, but hey, Renton and company are just trying to make do. Following a particularly heart-wrenching scene concerning the tragic loss of life, Renton is confined to his childhood bedroom and forced to quit heroin cold turkey. And this scene, oh this scene. Remind me to never pick up any bad habits because this scene paints withdrawal as the stuff of unimaginable nightmares. Horrible hallucinations and wicked visions haunt young Renton as his body demands that he gets his fix. This culminates in an especially creepy moment where a very ugly, dirty baby crawls its way across the ceiling above him and twists its head around 180 degrees to get a good look at our opioid adult pal. A classic horror movie move ever since The Exorcist popularized it. This swiveling dome is not something one expects when walking into this flick. Don't do heroin, kids. Filling out our number two spot, The Dark Crystal. <laughs> That's my best Chamberlain impression, very sorry about that. The first fantasy feature of two from puppeteering legend Jim Hansen, this is a fantastical fantasy film that we as a film going public do not deserve. It is stunning and fully realized and yes, pretty creepy. The world created for the events that play out in this movie and the new equally excellent Netflix series is incredible, deep and rich. The Dark Crystal should be a fantasy epic that's fun for the whole family. However, there are elements that hold it back in the realm of being a widely known, fondly remembered flick, even if its fans do find great joy in this. There's some messed up stuff that goes on here. The primary antagonists, the Skeksis, are totally terrifying. Gigantic slimy beasts with beaks and teeth and voice that remind me of the folks my parents taught me to avoid. The Skeksis waste no time in clawing their way into your subconscious fears. They eat rotten looking food and ooze all sorts of fluids, and when the Emperor dies, he crumbles into a mummified mess. Not hard to see why some folks can't get past these guys. They also seem to take great pleasure in draining the life energy from anyone they can get their grubby claws on. This process involves strapping their victims to a chair and siphoning their essence until they are grey and shriveled and awful to look at. The Skeksis also control an army of giant crab monsters who frequently roll in and mass murder those who aid the Gelflings. Speaking of Gelflings, even though there are elven heroes, they have carved out a particularly unsettling perch somewhere in the uncanny valley. They're sort of human and sort of elf and sort of puppet and their eyes never shine in a way that says we're alive. Oh boy. All of this in addition to a story involving the extermination of all life at the whim of a small group of evil overlords makes for a family flick that may not please the whole family. And lastly at number one, Watership Down.
Okay, so if you know anything about Watership Down, you know that it's terrifying. It's dark, and it's violent, and it's unflinchingly real. But on the surface, this is an animated movie about bunny rabbits, which might attract a crowd that isn't ready for the cold, stark realities that this flick hits you with. This 1978 animated feature was written, produced, and directed by Martin Rosen, who based it all on a book by the late, great Richard Adams. It's a survival story, and a story of hope in times of trouble. These are good kid-friendly themes, but when done in a kid-friendly way, Watership Down pulls no punches. Characters can die in an instant, often leaving their comrades to carry on without a proper goodbye or eulogy. The world the rabbits inhabit is full of danger, eyes peering out from the shadows, humans invading and killing whenever possible, and ghostly apparitions floating above. The way violence is portrayed is disturbing indeed, with scenes where likable rabbits are trapped in snares and vomit blood, and horrible warmongers tear at the flesh of other less powerful animals. If you look at the story from another angle, it becomes a war story, with desperate soldiers clawing their way through adversity to find some sort of peace. These themes are never dumbed down for the sake of accessibility, nor are the disturbing images censored to appeal to a wider audience. This film has a brutal story about life and death to tell you, and it will spare no detail. But again, it's a cartoon about rabbits, let's bring the kids. Cinema has a way of taking unsaid themes and bringing them to the surface. Sometimes these can manifest themselves in very scary ways. And sometimes these scary moments show up somewhere unexpected. What did you think of this list? Are there any other non-horror movies that scared the bananas out of you? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a peek into some from our last video. Caleb Baird says, Maybe the Siren Heads didn't copy Sirens from the future, but humans copied the Siren Heads, seeing that they were most likely the loudest things humans had heard up to that point. Thus, the origin of the modern siren was actually from an ancient terrestrial monster. That is a fantastic theory, Caleb. 10 points for thinking outside the box. The Doodle Man says, Hey kiddo, that mustache makes you look even more nervous and insecure. Hey old timer, I didn't ask. Thanks for projecting your insecurities onto me though. Just Know says, This is my siren headed impression. <laughs> You're welcome. Gacha Michael says, I don't get scared easily, so try me. Okay, let's give it a shot. Loneliness, crushing debt, your dreams never being realized. Is it working? And finally, Neo Hostine says, Potato, I mean, it's, I think it's pronounced potato, but good effort. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> With a hidden oasis, wonderful wonderland. With a hidden oasis, hidden deep in, with a hidden oasis, hid, what is happening? They don't want me telling these people about the hidden oasis. They want to keep it a secret. With a hidden oasis, hidden deep in, oh, it's because I say hidden twice. Okay, that's just a scripting error. Keegan, go back to school.